Cumulative frequency curves, also known as OGIVs, are a way for us to work with large amounts of data and get estimates for the median, the quartiles, and different percentiles, right? Because quartile three is the 75th percentile. Sometimes we look at different percentiles. Probably the time in your life when people looked at percentiles the most for you is when you're like a baby. You're born and your parents are so excited and they're like, ooh, let's weigh this baby. And the doctor says, oh, heavy baby. They're in the, they're in the 95th percentile for weight, meaning that of all the babies that age, you're at 95. Only 5% of babies are heavier than you, right? And your parents are excited, right? They don't take you anymore. Like, hey, did you know that you're in the 70th percentile for your weight as a grade 12 student? No. They don't do that anymore. But when you're a baby, oh, your height, they knew what percentile you were in for your height and those kind of things. And one of the ways that we can consider large amounts of data and understand it is through a cumulative frequency curve. So in order to do it, you have a frequency table. We have customers between 0 and 10 happened once, between 10 and 20 happened four times. Most of the time they get 40 to 50 people. And it looks like one time they had almost 90 people, between 80 and 90 people there. We add a chart to it, which is the cumulative frequency, which means after one time, there's only one person. But once you get up to 20, well, in total, you've now had five people. And uh, once you get up to 30, now in total, you've had 14 people. So we have a cumulative frequency. And in the end, that last number says there was 100 people in total. Ready? This is how we draw a cumulative frequency curve. We take this data here, and we're going to put it on a graph that looks like this. Don't draw the red lines first, but we'll start with dots. Because our cumulative frequency after 10, so we go back here, our maximum from 0 to 10 is 10. We have a frequency of 1. So we go onto our chart, and at 10, we draw a dot at 1. Then after 20 customers, there was 5 people cumulative after 20. So we would draw a dot at 20 at 5. What was our cumulative frequency at 30? 14. So we draw a dot at 14. A cumulative frequency at 40 was 25 or 26. 25, draw a dot at 25. Cumulative frequency after 50 customers, and then after 60, after 70, after 80, after 90. And 90 was the highest it went to. So on our chart here, 90 maxes out at 100. Once you have all of those dots in, you start at 0 and just try to draw a smooth curve through all of those dots. First of all, what we can do from this data, we knew there was 100 times in total 
that it was done. Okay? The median then would be the 50th, halfway. We can go on 50 on our cumulative frequency, <coughs> go across and then down, <coughs> excuse me, and use that to estimate approximately what our median would be. We can also find quartile 1 and quartile 3 that way. Since there's 100 in total, quartile 3 would be at 75. Quartile 1 would be at about 25. Notice that like, if you actually had 100, the median would be in between 50 and 51. But for a cumulative frequency curve, it's OK to estimate it at 50. The cumulative frequency curve is just one big estimation machine to give you an estimate for the median easily. And because they're always estimates, notice I'm using approximation signs all the way through. <coughs> so we can say 50% of the time they had 47 or more customers. Now going back to our data, just to help us understand this, if I go back to the data, okay, and Looking at one of our bigger classes, from 40 to 50 happened 32 times. And someone said, oh, I'm wondering how many times do you get more than 45 customers? How many times does that happen? Or what percentage of times do you get more than 45? Well, from this data, it's a little bit hard, right? Because you're like, ooh, but we got between 40 and 50 a lot. How many is more than 45? Or if someone said, well, how many times do you get more than 42 customers? You're like, ooh, I don't know how I would estimate that. I mean, I could try to portion this out, but it's not easy. The cumulative frequency curve says, if you want an estimate easy for 45, Take 45, go straight across from it. And because we drew a smooth curve through this, the curve naturally does an estimate what would be between 40 and 50. Going down from here, you could say, oh, oh, sorry, 45 customers, not the other way. Sorry, I'll go back. I was saying 45 customers, what percentile is that? Here's 45 right here. I would go up and over, and it looks like the 40th percentile. 40% of the time you'll have less than 45 customers, 60% of the time you'll have more than 45 customers. This can find us percentiles. Personally, I think I might be one of one people in Manitoba that have used this in real life outside of a math class. But what happened was I had a student write a math contest. And they're like, how well did I do? And I had a big data of how well the whole, all of Canada did in group frequency. These were how many people scored between this score and this score, this score, and this score, this score, and this score. And I was able to draw one of these and use it as an estimate to say, you did really well. You were in the 87th percentile based on your score as an estimate. It wasn't perfect, but it becomes a really, really good estimate for where things are at. But they are kind of tiring to draw and a little bit time consuming. So if you split something into 100 parts, I've been using this word already, those are called percentiles a little bit less common, deciles. 
quite a bit less common. You've probably heard of percentiles. Probably never heard the word deciles used before. So very uncommon. But percentiles, very common. And if you joined your lines with a straight line rather than a curved line, it's called a cumulative frequency polygon. But a cumulative frequency curve, a smoother curve, is actually better. But they both are very, very similar. If we look back at the last example that we did, we drew a curve. If I took a purple line and drew straight lines instead, Is it not almost identical? So whether you use a curve or a straight line would give you roughly the same estimates. They're not going to be that far off. So in some places, they have a cumulative frequency polygon instead of a cumulative frequency curve. But for the most part, we will be doing the curves. I'll add those numbers up for you to save you some time. Now, on a quiz or an exam, it is very rare. It has happened that they've got you to draw one of these. But most exam questions, they give you a curve already drawn, and you just have to be able to use it. But I will get you to draw this one. Let's see how you did here as an overall drawing. Your cumulative frequency always goes on the left. It goes up to 40. And your scores, maybe I'll zoom. Do that a little bit better. We're just drawing a straight line in between. The median is going to be at 20 now because there's only 40 in total. Quartile 1 at 10, quartile 3 at 30. So as far as our estimates go, again, we'll use approximation signs here. And based on how accurate you drew things or what scale, sometimes your numbers might be a little bit off. And on the exam, sometimes they'll say, we wanted the median to be 24, but based on how people draw lines, we would accept answers between 23 and 25 or 22 and 26. So they give a little bit of leeway there for uh, your answers. Notice that we've got approximations, but we don't have three sig figs because three sig figs sort of indicates that you're confident to 24.0. And we're not really that confident. We're just saying it's approximately 24. In this situation, that would be fine. Now, apparently, this was about cricket players and how good they are. And they want to give a prize to the top 20%. So what you're looking at or what you're looking for is the 80th percentile if you want to find the top 20%. Well, the 80th percentile, right, 20% of 40, top 20%, that's the top eight players, but the 80th percentile then would be the 32nd player. If we go back to our chart, we see that in the bright green, going across from 32 and down gives us a rough score of 44. Again, it's an estimate because if they used 44 and all of a sudden nine players had higher than 44, which could happen, they would give out nine awards even though they gave out more than the top 20%. But it gives 
an, a way of creating some of those boundaries. Scholarship might do this. They want to give out money to the top 10%. They've got some data, so they make their scholarship a certain number. Universities have scholarships, but they might just pick, pick a percentage. So they might have one year that they give out less money than another year. So some places change their percentages each time that they're giving out a scholarship. Some keep it the same and just go, ooh, this is a really bad year for us because all the kids are smart. We have to give out more money. Or would that be a good year? Oh, I don't know. I guess it depends on your perspective. Here's a more typical example. More typical example, your given data. I don't know if on your biology field trip if you're going to be measuring snails, but if you did, you might get your results. So diameters of 80 snails were measured. Results shown in a cumulative frequency graph. Lower quartile is 14 millimeters and is marked clearly on the graph. So it says, in the same way, find the median and the upper quartile. And write down the interquartile range. I'll put up the answers so you can check how you did. Now on this question, since the graph was given to you, there would be no leeway in the answers because it's pretty clear when you go across from 40 and down, you hit 20. When you go across from 60 and down, you hit 24. See how you did. Write down a median, matches up perfectly at 32. Interquartile range, approximately 18. Complete the table below. So if between 10 and 20, okay, when you go to 20 and went up and over, you get to 16. That means that there would be 11 students at that amount because the cumulative frequency is 16. 5 plus 11 is 16. Okay? So you might want to add a cumulative frequency on here, 5, 16, 36, 60. At 50, where do we hit at 50? At 74. This would have to be 14 to go up to 74 and then 80. 